Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this free masterclass on high-speed rail signaling for UAE projects. We welcome you all and would like to thank you for taking out your precious time for this webinar. Before we uh, start the session, we would like, for those who, uh, who are attending our webinar for the first time, we would like to give a small introduction about our organization. Uh, we are Railway Academy and uh, we have been providing training services and courses to rail professionals around the world. In the last few years, we've trained more than 5,000 people and our students have been working in uh, top of the line uh, railway companies around the world. We have uh, our, we, we conduct training pro programs across signaling, RAMs, rail safety, OHE, telecommunications, and modern rail technologies. Uh, you can check out our courses on, on our website on CBT, CETCS, ERTMS, RAMs, functional safety, railway signaling, uh, OHE, rolling stock, and many other topics. Uh, so as, a, as an organization, we uh, also do custom training programs. So if your organizations have any custom training requirements, you can get in touch with us. We'll be happy to discuss the avenues uh, with you. Uh, one, one of the major points that I would like to share today is that we have a virtual academy and majority of our programs are uh, delivered online. So it offers a lot of flexibility to you in terms of time, in terms of uh, cost, and you, you can be anywhere in the world and still attend our training programs in, uh, in either live uh, course mode or self-paced course modes. We have recorded course programs as well to suit your timings and uh, flexibility uh, issues. Going forward, uh, we uh, the recording of this webinar shall be available on our YouTube channel and on our LinkedIn page. Uh, we'll be recording this uh, session and would be hosting the session onto our YouTube channel. So I would request you to kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel, Facebook, and LinkedIn. The recording of today's session will be there for your reference. Uh, this program. Uh, that we are starting today uh, has been organized in order to create awareness about our uh, 12 hours live certificate course that we are planning to launch from 27th of this month. So I'll give you a brief uh, uh, overview about the course programs and the topics so that you could connect better to this masterclass. Uh, we are looking at launching a 12 hours online live course on high-speed rail signaling for UAE projects from 27th of May this month. Uh, working professionals with minimum three years work experience in rail projects can apply. Uh, the candidates who would like to take up this course program should have a basic knowledge of railway signaling. Even engineering graduates uh, uh, can apply to this particular program. We would be preferring people who have basic knowledge about railway signaling to understand the high-speed rail concepts. The course shall cover uh, 12 key topics. The first one would be introduction to high-speed rail signaling, where we'll be covering definitions and importance, how our signaling systems are evolving, uh, signaling technologies. Second session would talk about high-speed rail development, importance of signaling in high-speed rail, uh, rail technologies, fundamentals of signaling systems, types of signaling systems, components and various functions. Uh, Going further, fourth session will be talking about safety and regulations in high-speed rail signaling, covering safety standards, regulatory framework, compliances, and certification issues. Fifth session will be talking about advanced signaling technologies um, around CBTC and ERTMS. Then uh, sixth session will be having case studies of high-speed rail signaling projects. Seventh session will be having planning and design considerations for high-speed rail signaling, where we'll be talking about route planning, integration with existing infrastructure. Eighth, one, uh, eighth session, we'll be uh, talking about maintenance and operations of signaling systems, routine maintenance procedures, fault detection and resolution. Ninth session, we'll be talking about economics of high-speed 
real signaling, cost benefit analysis. Uh, 10th, 11th and 12th session, we'll be talking about future trends and innovations in railway, high speed rail signalings. What are the emerging technologies which are coming up? There are two sessions which we have allocated to discussions to resolve participant queries and interactions and discussions with the faculty. Uh, followed by, so after the training program, we'll be conducting an assessment and people who will qualify the assessment would be eligible for a certificate of completion for this course program. Now, uh, uh, all the sessions would be live online sessions, case-based. Case there will be an LMS support to help you with, uh, help you in accessing course program if you have missed any classes. Recordings would be shared in the LMS and you'll have access for one year duration. Uh, we'll also be helping you for uh, various job opportunities coming up in UAE markets. You will also get uh, opportunity to network with fellow rail professionals during the course and after the course as well. Uh, you can uh, uh, share, I'll be sharing the contact details towards the end of the webinar today so that you could contact us, those of you who are interested to enroll for this program. The course fees is INR 12,000 plus GST. We are offering some discounts for group enrollments of three, five and 10 plus enrollments. So if you have a, a group of friends, colleagues who would like to uh, learn high-speed rail signaling, you can enroll with us. Uh, apart from that, you can also check out our other course programs. Uh, this contact detail would be uh, shared with you on email after this webinar. Now, uh, coming back to the, so now I would like to uh, introduce our faculty for today who will be taking up the webinar. Darshan sir, could you please share your screen? I'm stopping uh, my presentation. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you. One moment. Sure, sir. Uh, so, very good evening, everyone. Uh, myself, I am Darshan. Darshan. And, uh, Darshan sir, could you uh, uh, go to the first slide, please, in the slideshow mode? Yes. Yes, sir. Right. Uh, sir, uh, I would like to uh, introduce our faculty for today. We have with us Mr. Darshan, who has extensive experience in uh, rail projects. And he has been in. Uh, he has been a master trainer with eminent organization and is an expert on uh, CBTC, ETCS, and advanced signaling uh, technologies. Uh, he has been our expert for uh, last few years and has trained. Uh, I I think more than thousand students on our platform on various rail technologies. So welcome, sir, and over to you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, good evening to everyone. Am I audible from participants? I want to listen. My voice is very clear. Anyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, you can hear us? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Hello. Yeah. Now, I think I've put a map, okay, in front of you. The UAE is the upcoming, okay, the happenings in the Middle East, uh, where you see Guhawet, from there all the way, it is a uh, Purjaha, okay, up to airport. Uh, you can see a blue line. And uh, before that, the uh, the red, uh, okay, the line is the stage one projects. And the future plan also, you can see a light green, okay, here. 
and in a nutshell uh, we have uh, a lot of okay the uae railway programs okay which are integrated with the sector okay uh, upcoming uh, decades together uh, railway projects okay they have been uh, also integrated with uh, 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 their economy all the sectors which includes the environment industrial as well as the tourism so it is expected to create an economic opportunity uh, amounting to aed okay uh, rm uh, emirate dollars about uh, 200 billions now uh, we can uh, list out the uh, the railways okay there the it has the railways one and uh, we have a urban railway systems there and the future future projects okay here uh, with a green water just i am showing there the passenger services and integrated uh, transport services and uh, we have a challenges over here the way uh, just i am explaining that that much simple over there because of the environment yeah here are the challenges are that despite this advancements okay the construction and the use of railway system uh, remain okay uh, very challenging uh, building run because the environment okay sand environment uh, discourage the construction but uh, we have seen uh, to overcome that okay they have proceed further and uh, let me just uh, show all the projects So no sound. So these are the projects in a nutshell I have shown. Then every participant gets whether am I eligible. So here I will show you the eight uh, verticals, okay, where you can fit uh, if not one in other. Let I start, okay, with uh, uh, engineering, okay. Engineering positions here, uh, you can be a civil engineer. You can Sir, be- You're not able to see your presentation. Okay, 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 okay. Hi, please. Uh, my presentation is not uh, seen. No, sir, no, sir. You need to close this and showcase your presentation. Please do a reshare. Please share your screen again. Okay, okay. Yes. Again, the video is coming. Sir. Yes, yes. It's a video only. Uh, just let me finish here. Two few lines are there. Sure, sure. Uh, other, uh, yeah. Now let me just link uh, those who are participants. Okay, I can see your seventy-two, including uh, uh, we people. Now you can be a civil engineer, you can be electrical, mechanical, structural, or the track engineers. Okay, these are the engineering positions uh, 
they are responsible design planning and uh, overseeing the construction and maintenance okay that's the part one and part two is the operational maintenance okay again the same okay the engineer they are uh, okay having a experience they can join there the third one i can see the uh, the future is with a project management okay where the railway engineers can also work as a project manager presentation is not visible there is only an image that is coming uh, now is it coming yes now it is there ha huh. okay okay yes uh, here uh, uh, as a part of uae i am introducing a high speed rail okay high speed rail signaling and uh, where the historical development uh, we have also seen at a glance uh, then importance and the role of railways in a modern technology and the type of uh, railway systems where uh, the high speed is put into the not only passenger but the freight okay uh, for both uh, now as a part of that uh, these are the complete okay the topics uh, now being our uh, happen to be a webinar definitely i'll cover all the okay uh, one after the other the topics uh, and uh, now we will see the first one uh, the high speed rail okay so before going there i would like to ask the participant to make our webinar very uh, interactive could you anyone please tell me what is high speed rail could you define you can type your answers in the chat box also uh, yes 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 high speed uh, the, i would like to say that this is a uh, uh, speedy rail like uh, harman here in saudi arabia by uh, more than 300 speeds so we okay. can good answer like... good answer uh, yes i'll appreciate then uh, chenmai uh, typed as a 140 uh, then any other answer please which is greater than standard 4 what is standard 4 up to up where which speed kilometers. up to 160 kilometers okay then i can see 150 200 mohammed the tough 200 uh, then it is hamad jian uh, 120 more than 120 uh, yes uh, please have a paper and pen because uh, that is uh, one of uh, okay, the interview question for you Yes, more than 160. Thank you so much for the participant. We'll proceed there. Now, are you able to see my screen over here? Yes. 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 Now, kindly have a look of, uh, okay, one sec there. Now, the top is the Japan SC Maglew train and uh, the followed by the France uh, TGV. And uh, we have a China at third, okay. Uh, that uh, the Shanghai Maglew train, the principal or the working technology is the Maglew, and uh, South Korea KTX, and uh, Spain AVE, and uh, Italy uh, Francesco 1000, okay, and uh, Germany the ICE, Italy the Italio, and the Turkey YHT, and the Sweden SJ. Now, here I draw your attention. Where you got a light blue, uh, sky blue, I can say the maximum operating speed. So whatever you see here, uh, some of them already told the congratulations. The correct answer is a, uh, it's a more than two hundred, and below four hundred is the correct answer for the high speed. Now the sky blue is the running systems. Uh, they are the commercial being uh, commercially that is being uh, now working. Okay, they are in service, right? And all the countries, of course, they do their own research. Uh, the ink blue or the dark blue, okay? Uh, can you see there the numbers? Uh, can you read somebody what is the highest number? 603. 603 is a, a laboratory or the tested speed by the Japanese. And that is being noted, uh, put into the commercial, right? And the France is, stands the next uh, 575, five, right? 
like that there is a descending order okay uh, so these are the each country specific uh, they have done uh, their uh, r and d and they are ready with the technology but that is yet to be implemented as a commercial so coming to our topic uh, so this is uh, the the speeds uh, 200 to 350 is the range uh, we could see there and uh, yes we can keep up to 400 is the high speed okay is defined by uh, usa as well as uh, okay the india and others okay there is no mandatory of the defined uh, terminology but yes uh, okay we follow some of the countries those who are okay i have been uh, established the standards okay uh, i think i have answered your question now here onwards hsr means that's a 200 to uh, 400 now, of course, these are the live, okay, as on uh, the month or year, okay, there's a live, okay, tested speed, so, okay, uh, worldwide. Now, we take uh, today to discuss specific to a uh, UAE and their complete transportation uh, to grab the opportunities. Now, United Arab Emirates, uh, the nation known for the innovation and the pushing the boundaries, high speed rail perfectly, okay, uh, being now put into the service uh, spirit, spirit and the promising of a revolution transportation within their country. Over the next few, okay, uh, the upcoming uh, our topics, uh, we will going to see the verticals of that one. And uh, where we see uh, what the benefits okay being uh, okay utilized by this country, and uh, yes, I have already defined you the what is high speed. So high speed is at two hundred okay uh, kilometers kmph okay per hour is the speed. Yes. Now this can be uh, some of the countries they uh, use the okay the units as miles per hour okay. If you put that one into the miles per hour, that comes to the 125 kmph. And uh, yes, they are uh, not only the speed wise, the okay, the movements, uh, but they are known even for the efficiency as well as the comfort also. They never compromise the comfort. And they offer a more okay sustainable alternate to our traditional aeroplanes for a medium distance travels. Okay, so there the, the gap or the areas being being uh, filled by the HSR. Now the UAE vision, if you see for a high, high speed rail, okay, the UAE has a, uh, has sets uh, firmly on the future uh, with its vision for a high speed rail network. Uh, in a, at a glance, I have already shown you the clip. Uh, this network will con connect the major, uh, okay, the Emirates, including Abu Dubai, Dubai, Kama uh, uh, Sharja and other okay the major uh, cities there. Uh, here I can those who are very perfect to mark the cities okay they can uh, uh, okay mark over here and uh, which includes the okay imagine uh, yes this is a projects okay uh, imagining uh, being able to travel between these cities uh, in a fraction of time it currently takes right now. It would not only benefit the resident, uh, but also the boosts uh, the upcoming, okay, the tourism and uh, together, okay, it is also resulting uh, economic activity throughout the region. The focus here on the creating a unified and efficient transportation system that will transform the way people and the goods move within a UAE. And uh, yes, uh, these are the goals, okay, created a seamless as well as efficient transportation system across the country. That's what uh, the vision of uh, UAE about the HSR. Now, potential benefits, okay, of uh, HSR in UAE. Uh, yes, uh, we have now discussed one factor is for everyone is the time. So reducing a travel time between cities, uh, where I have shown the map, uh, the distance from Abu Dubai to the uh, Dubai is under one hour. You can okay finish up that. And uh, which uh, basically see even uh, taking away the 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 
business of uh, the short span of the aeroplanes and uh, where uh, uh, hsr okay the efficiently safety wise okay it is uh, offering a, a more sustainable mode of transportation and uh, targeted for definitely for increasing uh, tourism and uh, improving quality of life faster commuters uh, can lead uh, to a better work life balancing uh, for the resident uh, which they can uh, okay move from uh, one place to other place okay then the future of high speed rail okay in uae the upcoming okay uae hr uh, hsr uh, projects are still in uh, early stages but uh, yeah, that looks very uh, looks very bright the technological uh, advancement uh, in its uh, area like in upcoming okay the trains can be a uh, uh, maglev trains means uh, the magnetic uh, levitation technology could push the speed further okay and uh, right now we can see all their hsr projects are with the uh, etcs level 2 system and uh, if if possible if they are going to even connect with the neighbor okay countries now the current status of the uh, high speed rail in uae now uh, the Itihad Rail project is the foundation for the UAE HSR ambitions. Stage one, one of the Itihad Rail network uh, focuses on freight tra transport and it's operational. Now that is in operational. And uh, stage two, which involves the passenger services with a speed of 200 kmph uh, currently under development. And initial plans are focused on the high-speed rail line connecting between the Abu Dubai and the Dubai. Significantly, yes, uh, we have already uh, discussed the two Emirates being uh, reduced the time. Yes, uh, as I told you here, there are more challenging uh, because of the, the environment. The construction of high-speed rail network in a desert environment uh, okay, presents a unique challenges. That's why they need a uh, high-skilled people expert from throughout the world. So that's the uh, opportunity for we people. And uh, high temperatures and uh, number two sandstorms need to be factored while the design and construction of the projects. That's a very challenging. And the projects required uh, significant investments and the ridership projections uh, need to be carefully assessed. So that's one more, okay, the challenging for us. And uh, now UAE high-speed rail projects, okay, catalyst for transformation. Uh, high-speed rail is a more than just a transportation. It's a... Uh, a catalyst okay for a positive change it can transform okay cities and fostering a new development corridors around the stations and hsr can create a new business opportunity encouraging regional collaborations and the project has the potential to position the uae as a leader in a sustainable transportation especially in a middle east Now, yes, uh, high-speed uh, rail embodies the US, UAE okay, spirit of uh, their innovation and the progress. And uh, UAE uh, sets itself as a benchmark for high-speed rail development in this region. And uh, as a part of that, the high-speed rail of their project, uh, in a nutshell of conclusion, because we cover everything in a, uh, our uh, course there, so what the conclusion over here about the high speed rail why it is justified to the uae and uh, where high speed rail represents a transformative leap uh, forwarding a uae uh, transportation system and there it promises the faster travel time economic growth and environmental benefit and the target is of course to boost the uh, tourism 
and uh, uae is uh, well positioned itself uh, to be a leader in hsr technology in the region okay so these are the okay the nutshell way of the hsr to be uh, connected to the uae now we'll see the overview of high speed rail in uh, uae and uh, yes uh, Abu Dhabi is an ever-evolving destination in the surreal landscape of the United Arab Emirates. It has always been known as a cultural, progressive, and dynamic place. However, road transportation stands a sore thumb here. There are dark clouds over the horizon thanks to an increasing number of vehicles, growing freight needs, traffic jams, gas-guzzling heavy goods vehicles, and not enough public transportation. One big question has haunted the government over the years. Will our beautiful Abu Dhabi fall victim to its own rapid development? Without a doubt, this transport trial has been incredibly stressful. To tackle these issues and meet the growing demands, Etihad Rail, a $100 billion desert transport mega project, majestically appeared on the scene. Etihad Rail is an ambitious initiative and is set to revolutionize the transportation scene in Abu Dhabi, bridging the gap between the current transport infrastructure and the city's escalating mobility needs. Upon completion, the rail network will span approximately 1,200 kilometers throughout the UAE, seamlessly connecting the nation's major urban areas and industrial hubs and improving the flow of goods and people across the Emirates. But how does a country filled with expansive sand dunes build a 1,200-kilometer railway? And will this finally be the train network that connects all of the Middle East? The concept of the Etihad Railway Network was born in 2009, a time when the major transport infrastructure in the UAE was heavily road-dependent. In 2006, the UAE had a score of 190 deaths per million in traffic collisions linked to high speeds and a poor safety culture. Six people were killed, at least 40 were injured, and dozens of vehicles were burned on March 11, 2008, when hundreds of cars collided on a fog-shrouded Abu Dhabi-Dubai highway. The idea of a pan-emirates railway system in this scene was not just daring, it was revolutionary. The project would necessitate a harmonious mix of technology, infrastructure, logistics, and a thorough understanding of geography and demographics. It wasn't just about erecting tracks and running trains, it was about connecting communities, catalyzing trade, uplifting industries, promoting sustainability, and crafting a backbone for a future-ready nation. A rail project of this magnitude was unprecedented in the region. The visionary UAE leaders saw the challenge as an opportunity to pioneer a new era of transport in the Middle East. Established under Federal Law No. 2, the plan called for the construction of 593 crosses and bridges in addition to tunnels that were approximately 6.5 kilometers in length. At least 15 tunnels will be excavated through the Hajar Mountains, with a further 35 bridges designed for heavy cargo loads. This was an absolutely remarkable feat of engineering. Sustainable passenger and freight transportation across the urban and rural UAE is expected to change with this railway. The freight line has the capacity to transport up to 22,000 tons of sulfur daily, showcasing the efficiency of the network. Unlike average railways, Etihad Rail's freight trains are projected to reach speeds of up to 120 kilometers per hour. On the other hand, the passenger trains will travel at speeds of up to 200 kilometers per hour, linking 11 cities and areas. Each train will carry about 400 people. The luxury train will consist of 15 fully refurbished carriages, each offering a unique glimpse into Emirati culture and heritage. Along with food and drink, carriages will have Wi-Fi, entertainment systems, charging ports, and more. Various seating options, including first, business, and economy class, will also be available. Specialized manufacturers in Sicily and Puglia, Italy, will restore the train carriages to like-new condition, adding Italian craftsmanship and creativity to the process. 
Customers can anticipate a 50-minute journey time between Abu Dhabi and Dubai and around 100 minutes from Abu Dhabi to Fujairah, thus reducing commute times. More than 36 million individuals will be able to use the service each year by 2030, once it is ready. The railway, as the maps show, will link the principal centers of trade, industry, manufacturing, production, logistics, population, and all the major import and export points of the UAE, while forming an integral part of the GCC railway network. By connecting a country's trade centers, rail acts as a catalyst for economic growth. In the coming years, wagons running along the Etihad rail tracks will move anything from consumer goods to perishable food and beverages. Some of the typical products expected to move across the Emirates include hay, ceramics, polymers, sugar, metals, waste, and shipping containers. Coming back to the logistic benefits, a double-track design caters to mixed-use traffic and conforms to European signaling system standards. This state-of-the-art railway network employs heavy axle loads of 32.5 tons. Adahad Rail recently announced a triple expansion of its fleet of wagons, fueling the future of trade in the UAE. The contracts to manufacture and supply 842 additional wagons will increase the total fleet to over 1,000, multiplying the transport capacity eightfold. This expansion is set to catalyze both domestic and international trade by supporting various types of cargo. It was envisioned to be completed in different stages, the first of which has been operating since 2015 and covers around 264 kilometers. Its primary purpose is to support freight transit. It is the goal of the second stage, which involves extending the network by approximately 605 kilometers to connect the cities and important ports, which will result in a stronger impact on the trading landscape of Arabia. But as told earlier, the benefits of the network extend far beyond transportation. The Etihad Railway Network highlights the UAE's pledge towards an eco-friendly future, committing to the goal of reducing carbon emissions. A fully loaded freight train can carry the equivalent cargo of 300 trucks, reducing carbon dioxide emissions by up to 80%. Once the network is fully operational, greenhouse gas emissions will decrease by more than 2.2 million metric tons per year. Now, let's dig deeper into the different phases, each contributing to this enormous, one-of-its-own-kind railway network across the UAE. The completion of Phase 1 occurred in the year 2013. This includes a 264-kilometer track that stretches from Shah and Habshan until it reaches the port of Ruwais on the Arabian Gulf. Its primary use is for freight services, specifically delivering granulated sulfur for Abu Dhabi National Oil Company. In Phase 2, complexity grows. The main goal is to expand the existing network from Ruwais to the UAE's border with Saudi Arabia at Guwefat and from there to the port of Fujairah on the UAE's east coast. This phase includes several key packages. Package A of Phase 2 covers the rail line from Ruwais to Guwefat. It runs for about 139 kilometers and includes 31 bridges and 8 underpasses, whereas Package B connects the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia. It stretches for about 166 kilometers and comprises 11 bridges and 60 underpasses. Package C is dedicated to creating a 94-kilometer line from Al Ain to Abu Dhabi, and Package D addresses the need for a 145-kilometer stretch directly connecting Dubai and Abu Dhabi. The ultimate goal is to complete the UAE's connection with the rest of the Gulf nations, which will be met in Phase 3. By now, the whole of the UAE would be interconnected, with tracks reaching into the northern emirates like Ras al Khaimah and Fujairah. Ras al Khaimah is, by the way, turning into a key part of the UAE's growth story. It was once a quiet and distant place, but now it is about to get a fast track link to all the big cities in the UAE, thanks to this mammoth project. This means more local jobs, a boost in business, and a jump in tourism. It's like turning a peaceful, quiet town into a lively city. Imagine the overall impacts of this project if a mere byproduct is like this. 
when it is projected to carry the equivalent of 36.5 billion passengers and 50 million tons of goods each day, it transforms into something more than just a railway. Every inch of track, a ton of freight moved, and mile traveled reflects a country's desire for progress and unity. The Etihad Rail is single-handedly redefining boundaries. Thank you for watching, and please do let Yes, uh, this was about uh, the complete projects of uh, completed and uh, upcoming projects and the future projects. Now, we have seen uh, the high-speed rail of uh, UAE uh, where uh, In upcoming days, okay, they are going to okay switch over to the Maglu or the new latest technology. Right now, whatever you have seen, all are the ETCS level two systems, and uh, the history of high speed rail in UAE. UAE has the long history of investing in a transportation in infrastructure. In two thousand four. UAE government has announced the plans to build a high speed rail a network. And the construction on the network uh, began in 2009 once it is put it into the service. And the phase, okay, the first phase of the network, uh, it had, okay, rail network uh, opened uh, for a uh, public, okay, it's on uh, 2016. Now, the current uh, status of the uh, network, uh, the Ithihad rail uh, network is currently only on a high speed rail network in a UAE. The network is uh, 1200 kilometers, uh, which comes into the 245 miles, a long one. And the network connects the cities of uh, Abu Dubai, Dubai, and uh, Al Hain. And the network is uh, used for the freight transportation as of now. And uh, where uh, this becomes uh, the servicing as a backbone of the UAE economy by ensuring a swift and uh, efficient movement of the goods across the country. Now the future plans, uh, uh, because uh, that uh, the clip has gone very fast, so those who have not catched over there, so future plans for the expansion. Uh, UAE government has planned to expand the high-speed rail network. Uh, the expansion, okay, the plans including building a new lines that will connect Abu Dubai Dubai, Sharjah, and Ajman, and uh, Umahala, Kiwan, and uh, Rashal, Komaria, and uh, Furjahai. So, up to east. The expansion will also include the building a new line that uh, connects the UAE to the Saudi Arabia. This, uh, the project is expected, uh, okay, expansion uh, is uh, as per the plan to be completed by 2030. The expansion of this high-speed rail network will help to improve the transportation links between the all the UAE major cities and also helps to boost the country's uh, economy. And uh, benefits, okay, uh, this is we have already uh, discussed uh, where uh, previously I told, okay, uh, that to connect uh, Abu Dubai to Dubai, it's about one hour is the target. So where it is already, okay, being uh, achieved there. Then environmentally sustainability. The high-speed rail is a uh, more environmentally friendly. Uh, there you have seen uh, a mode of transportation that uh, the cars and the aeroplanes, okay, compared to that, uh, this becomes a uh, high-speed rail, okay, where uh, the, uh, the emission which uh, damage the environment will be very less or the minimal or no, okay, emissions. Yes, challenges again for a high-speed rail in UAE, the high cost, that's a number one. High-speed rail is a very expensive mode of transportation to build and maintain. And the, the yeah, to suit their conditions, uh, also I've discussed the UAE hot and desert climate can pose the challenges for the construction and uh, operation of high-speed rail infrastructure. And of course, it's uh, there, okay, the one look after factor is the land acquisition. So UAE government may need to acquire, a, because those who want to join the project managers, for them, one challenging is the land, okay, getting of the land to get a permit to work over there. 
So UAE government may need to acquire a significant amount of land to build a new high-speed rails. Now high-speed rail, the growth uh, transportation uh, in a UAE, the UAE is investing uh, over uh, heavily on a high-speed rail infrastructure where one part of the OEM is the Itihad rail. Yes, uh, these are the live projects uh, we are expecting by 2030. These are the upcoming, okay, the stations and uh, their uh, the prototype, uh, okay, design. Now, before going there, might be some of you are not, okay, aware completely, actually, the fundamental of the signaling system. So, in upcoming course, we are going to cover all this. Uh, so, fundamentals of the signaling system is very much uh, required. Uh, let it be any country uh, where especially we are discussing about the high-speed rail. So, the fundamental of uh, high-speed rail signaling system, uh, which okay right now being uh, into the service in UAE is the basically ETCS, okay, the level 2 of one particular OEM, uh, right now I can't, okay, uh, going to disclose that name. And uh, we will, okay, going to uh, explore the crucial role of these systems, okay, play into the ensuring a safe and efficient and reliable operation of high-speed trains. Uh, uh, right now, the technology is being uh, with the Itihad rail network and a future expansion. So that much I can tell you here or here. And anybody uh, who is right now working with a uh, UAE, uh, could you just uh, participate? Could you respond over here? Anybody from the right now, you are associated with uh, one or other part of the system? Anyone? Yes. Now, as a part of the signaling system, I am going to discuss a very in a nutshell. One is the signaling system, right? The signaling system is the communication based train. Okay, the control system where the movement authority is by being directly okay, uh, being uh, sent to the onboard system. At the same time, uh, the level two. In the case of degraded, there is a uh, support from the track side. Uh, then these all are being uh, controlled by a, uh, one centralized officer. So this officer uh, will call it as a uh, the operational control center. The signaling system or central nervous system of uh, any railway network as a matter of fact. Especially high speed rail, okay, where the safety and uh, precise are the paramount there. And uh, these systems, okay, uh, transmit uh, the critical information to train operators, which includes the uh, the speed restrictions, uh, the signal aspects, and upcoming track uh, configurations. So by adhering uh, to the signals and the train operators maintain the safe distances between the trains, uh, uh, where uh, uh, we are, uh, okay, uh, mandatory, we are preventing uh, the collisions uh, that can be a head-on collision, rear collision or side collision, uh, by which the result is uh, ensuring a smooth flow of the traffic. Where uh, uh, we also have uh, advanced, okay, signaling uh, systems, uh, which, okay, enables to uh, add on to the existing technology is the ATO, okay, automatic train operations, which uh, further enhances the safety and the efficiency. Sorry. Yeah, safety and the efficiency. Uh, yes, that's uh, one of the cutting edge uh, signaling system, uh, which helps, okay, add on to the safety and the operational efficiency further. Now, importance of signaling system in high-speed rail. Number one, that's a backbone of any railway network and uh, where uh, 
the movement authority is being uh, directly which uh, bidirectionally being communicated to track side to onboard and onboard to track side now type types of okay signaling system in uae uh, one is the automatic train control okay so where uh, which enforces the wherever the movements are to be restricted so that enforces the speed limits and uh, which further okay onboard system will uh, controls the brake management system for preventing trains from from passing a danger signal then uh, that's uh, one of the proven technology in europe uh, might be everybody aware and uh, that's the european train control system etcs system that's directly okay being adopted by the uae where uh, this okay that uh, system okay uh, where uh, one oh, particular okay system uh, oem of track side and on board which communicates each other and uh, one thing i can uh, oh, oh, clearly i can disclose over here is apart from the basic system uh, which also uh, artificial intelligence uh, is the put it into the service aware uh, to suits to their condition okay weather condition the artificial intelligence sensors uh, are always monitoring the integrity of the track as well as while train uh, once they are going with a high speed the condition of the the axles as well as the wheels as well as the condition of uh, the train and uh, being uh, automatically uh, which is going to be scanned and uh, being updated to the team which th that is okay uh, they are regularly maintaining now further uh, uh, once uh, we have discussed about this uh, projects okay while designing and the development as well as the installation testing commissioning but the part two is the maintenance okay so while uh, maintenance also the integrating of high speed rail systems okay in the uae present okay the certain challenges number one is the climate the UAE is a hot and a dusty desert a climate can pose the challenges for the reliability and the performance of trackside equipment. So accordingly, the suitable technology is supposed to be okay used there. And uh, integration. So seamless uh, integration of the signaling system which the existing railway infrastructure, particularly the Ithias rail network is a crucial where uh, they are uh, already being implementing. And the next one is the cyber security because uh, just now I have disclosed uh, this is how the way train gets the wireless communication about the movement authority where there is a possibility of uh, the others okay of uh, interrupting the services. So where uh, the cyber security plays the role uh, for uh, encryption the data between the onboard as well as the track side and a bidirectional. So robust uh, uh, cyber security measures are necessary to safeguard the signaling system from potential cyber attacks. So here uh, the everyone's supposed to understand where because of these conditions, so every uh, individual of uh, the listeners and in future those who are going to listen also, for uh, them it's an opportunity. For example, a cyber security engineer also there is an opportunity as well as you see the the maintenance part of all their rolling stock onboard system as well as the signaling system track system so everywhere the challenging is there so we got a lot of opportunities and uh, basically uh, what it happens in the cyber security the signaling system where uh, the cyber attacks that can disrupt uh, the operations and uh, where it demands the implementation of strong uh, authentication protocols, encryption and regular vulnerability assessments are crucial to safeguard the system, okay, the railway system. Now that's a part of the fu fundamental signaling system. Once, uh, okay, these are the complete topics we are going to cover. 
so among them some of the okay the topics uh, where i am discussing now we will bit a uh, couple of okay uh, the slides will discuss about the safety and regulation in hrs signaling system okay so where uh, safety of uh, regulations uh, in a high speed rail signaling system is supposed to be very specific to each country right so where uh, you see uh, uae uh, will explore the stringent regulations that govern this system and ensuring a safe efficient and reliable operation of high speed rail okay in in the itihad uh, rail network uh, and in future expansion now here uh, mm, uh, i can't okay disclose the country specific uh, their uh, standards but a uh, overview of uh, the equivalent or the more than that okay uh, i can uh, discuss with you as of now happen to be a webinar where the key regulatory bodies involved to ensure this one is the federal transport authority we call it uh, in a uae fta and uh, by virtue of the uh, project experience the itad rail also having their own okay the specific uh, technical standards and uh, overseeing their implementation with the network signaling so they to have the own standards and uh, yes as i told you where uh, we can uh, even refer uh, equivalent okay the standards uh, here i can mention is the uic uic is the international union of railways they have also okay made a, so much of guidelines uh, by high speed rail which is now right now the railway signaling regulations okay may not be publicly available by the presentation the tailored by uh, incorporating information from relevant okay they are relevant uh, to be appropriate uh, or available with a uic and international uh, standards and the best practices okay where the uh, yes we can see the uae high speed rail signaling systems uh, likely to adhere to the international standards and the best practices for the purpose of safety and the performance so where uh, we are looking forward for the compatibility with the signaling system in other countries facilitating international okay the travel and the leveraging the collective knowledge and the experience of the global railway industry and maintaining the highest safety benchmark international union of uh, the international union of railways is one okay where uh, the range of uh, uic issues the range of technical specifications and the standards applicable to railway system which includes the uh, one is uh, i have already mentioned you uh, european train control system where uh, european train control system is specific to the europe but also that is being uh, uh, tailored and uh, designed to apply into the other than europe uh, other than europe now as of now we are discussing as on day of uh, 2024 the existing uh, present technology that could put into the working as the projects here but upcoming okay the advanced technology also there advanced signaling systems in high speed rail for a uae now as the uae continues to develop uh, its high speed rail network these cutting edge techni technologies uh, offers a uh, promising solutions to address a uh, unique challenges in the regional uh, environment and uh, support for the future plans there uh, the conditions uh, we have already okay discussed uh, then these are the uh, upcoming technology potentially advanced signaling system for the uae one is the already being used and this can also goes to the level three ones that is being developed and uh, as a commercial and uh, etcs system okay the widely uh, used system known for its safety features including automatic train stopping continuous train location monitoring and a potential benefit for the uae 
where it enhances the safety and the improve efficiency. And uh, the next technology is the communication-based train control system and uh, where which utilizes the radio communication to transmit the signal information from track to onboard as well as the onboard to the track and the potential benefits for the UAE which uh, definitely increases the network capacity and uh, the tight tighter uh, headway is the reducing distance between the trains okay that's the challenging upcoming it's so possible by the cbtc now implementing considerable uh, for advanced signaling system so integrating with the existing infrastructure is very much required because that is already uh, the inventory is being put into the that and seamless integration of advanced signaling system with the existing it has rail network is a crucial that's a number one point to be noted while uh, advanced signaling to be integrated with this and technical expertise and the training for both okay those who are associated with the projects is very much required so where implementing and maintaining this advanced systems required a specialized technical expert so this uh, I can see as an opportunity and of course their training is required to upgrade their skills to work with the new technology and where of course the cost is one factor where the advanced signaling system typically involves the higher okay upfront costs compared to the traditional signaling system especially in the beginning as well as while maintaining the system. Just I'm skipping, uh, okay, because that's a detailed course. Yes, sir, the one case study, okay, we'll see. Uh, yes, here the HSR uh, high speed rail, okay, refers to the control of the controls, the movement of the trains on a line and uh, UAE has uh, invested the heavily on high speed rail in recent year and uh, HSR signaling uh, is a, a very critical component of this infrastructure. Uh, in a clip, uh, because uh, to meet our, uh, what we call is the time, that the project uh, wise stage wise have already uh, discussed here as a case study which uh, cost and everything and uh, second one is the dubai metro route okay yes here we'll discuss a uh, dubai metro route okay 2020 is the project might be some of the participant i can see here Yes. So Dubai Metro is the 15 kilometers. Uh, if you convert into the miles, that's a 9.3. Okay. The extension of the Dubai Metro. Again, that is in the pipeline. Okay. And the project uh, now completed and that's in uh, service. Okay. Since uh, 2020, uh, where uh, HSR, okay, the signaling for Dubai Metro route. 2020 was provided by company name now we are not going to disclose this is a abu dubai metro where uh, it is planned for a rapid transport uh, a transit system for the abu dubai the capital of uh, uae the project is con uh, con currently under construction and is expected to be completed in 2026 And uh, these are, okay, for a nutshell, we are, okay, discussing as a part of webinar. But uh, once you join, we will, de detail, we are going to discuss the complete projects. Now here, uh, uh, we have, okay, the, the, the complete uh, uh, various, okay, the fields, you got an opportunity, including a planning design consideration for HSR signaling, which uh, also the metros,
now you're saying a uh, uae is experiencing a, a significant growth in its high speed rail network to ensure a safety efficiency and uh, reliability of these systems meticulously the planning as well as the design of uh, hsr uh, signaling are the paramount uh, and this presentation we have seen okay uh, is the 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 need for the high speed people uh, the high skilled people are required over here and the factors uh, while this design going to be uh, influenced uh, number one is the traffic density and the speed and uh, number two is the network complexity. And uh, number three, I can say is the already I've discussed uh, the environmentally condition. And the number four, the projects are already uh, being uh, done and they are in the running condition. And uh, the some of them are already in the pipeline. And for the future design, we have to keep that in our mind and uh, that is to be integrated with the existing system. So the fourth point is very, very important. If you want to work as a uh, the designer there. So new HSR lines may connect uh, with the existing conventional railway network. And uh, we call it uh, one word is the interoperability. Okay. So that uh, actually there in case of uh, by virtue of design itself, in case of ETCS system and the signaling system needs needs a seamless integration okay because the trains are further in the new lines also without any much obstruction so they have to move from one point to other point so these are the factors okay significantly impact the design these are the some of the fact factors i can say right now these are the some of the factors significantly impact the design of HSR signaling system. So carefully analysis is required to ensure the choosing uh, the technology which meets all these demands, which includes uh, some of them I have not, I have not okay, mentioned here. See, some of them are, uh, let me add here also. So signaling technology selection and uh, automatic train protection which integrates with the braking system and that. And of course, the communication system is the backbone uh, while designing, uh, okay? The reliable and high bandwidth communication infrastructure is essential for the data transmission between trains and the control center bi-directional. Considering options like uh, with wired or without wired, we have a fiber optic cables as well as the dedicated network radios. So selecting uh, here the key point is the right technology for each element is a very crucial. Each component should be worked together seamlessly to ensure optimal performance. Now standards and regulations, uh, yes, there is no doubt. Uh, once we join, uh, we are got a authority to uh, get the standards what the the country okay where they want to utilize our services so there we have oh, 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 authorizedly we can see there uh their uae got their own regulations and uh at the same time if you are exposed to the international standards also that also it's very useful for us like uh, international interoperability so where if the uae's hsr networks aim for the future future international connections uh, uh, by the other countries, the considering uh, international signaling standards for the compatibility. So the following regulations and consideration of uh, future expansion possibilities are vital for a sustainable and adaptable uh, HSR signaling system. Now project uh, implementation consideration, you can use the AI in that, you can design with the AI and uh, you can have a, your conventional method or your experience, okay? So facing and integration and uh, cybersecurity training and maintenance is a part of that. So well-defined plan for the implementation, including facing 
and the cyber security and the training is a crucial okay for the successful operation of a hsr signaling now all together uh, what in a uh, nutshell we have discussed is the uh, the four points here i have discussed carefully planning and the designing of hsr signaling systems are essential for the ua growth uh, okay high speed rail network considering factors like a uh, traffic density environmental condition and the network complexity is the vital and the third point is selecting the right technology and uh, com communication system and uh, adhering to the regulations which ensures uh, safety and the efficiency and a well defined implementation plan with a facing cyber security training is a crucial for success right as a part of the design and uh, prioritizing this planning and the design considerations uh, uae is ready to ensure its high speed signaling system are the robust and adaptable and uh, support for the safe come efficient and the reliable operations of its high speed rail network now we'll go to the maintenance and operations so this is a forever okay the opportunity for everyone though someone is missed during a uh, part 1 and part 2 uh now this is a uh, maintaining and uh, operating of hsr speeds speed the, the the railway system uh of course they are the complex and uh, critical components of the modern hsr network Uh, ensures the proper maintenance and operation is a uh, vital for the safety and efficiency as well as the reliability of hsr operations okay where uh, we have a uh, three verticals over there for the purpose of those who want to join this okay the segment one is the preventive maintenance and uh, next one is the predictive maintenance and the third one is a corrective maintenance okay and now where uh, we are putting into the help of uh, the 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 artificial intelligence okay of the sensors being deployed uh, on the track uh, so they are continuously monitoring even condition of the track condition of the track so always uh, the comprehensive okay maintenance strategy is a crucial okay for especially the high speed rails signaling system a combination of preventive uh, predictive and uh, corrective maintenance helps okay ensuring the system's reliability and uh, minimizes the downtime that's the secret formula over there preventing maintenance forms the foundation and the catching issues early okay which uh, uh, predicts the maintenance utilizes the technology advancements to anticipate the problems before they occurs not only occurs in big way they occurs so corrective maintenance should be minimized actually corrective maintenance is nothing but a breakdown maintenance through the robustness of the other two okay the technology like a uh, preventive and predictive if that is strong uh, that reduces the corrective maintenance so where uh, of course the rams will play the role these are the some of the techniques okay to maintain the maintenance activity so where very detailedly we are going to cover then operational considerations okay the where uh, one part is the training okay the staff training and uh, real time monitoring is the during working where the continuous monitoring of signaling system for anomalies or potential failures okay which utilizes the control centers okay where uh, uh the trained personnel uh, is required and uh, the system operations being uh, handled by this operators okay and uh, incident response processes so where uh, it establishes the clear procedures for responding to incidents like a uh, signal failure so what's the plan b or if the track side equipment uh, having some malfunctions so at the time what the protocol has to be followed so this ensures a swift uh, and a coordinated uh, response uh, to minimize or to overcome the impact of the disruptions 
of course uh, the spare parts management is one we can say simply the stores management so that's also one opportunity for everyone where well defined uh, basically a spare parts management strategy is a crucial for uh, efficient maintenance operations by identifying a critical spare spare parts and maintaining an adequate stock and uh, repairs can be conducted uh, swiftly and minimizing downtime. Conducting a critical analysis uh, helps uh, prioritize uh, which part need to be stocked in a sufficient quantity and partnering with uh, reliable suppliers ensures a steady flow of uh, spare parts and wherever that is needed. Okay, this is the technique. Now that's what uh, here uh, uh, where uh, the maintenance part uh, let me conclude. Now, the maintenance part uh, is uh, prioritizing uh, maintenance and operation, uh, both. Uh, we can ensure the HSR uh, signaling system functions uh, at its uh, optimal level. A well-defined maintenance signaling system translates to a safe, efficient, and uh, reliable HSR network. There is no doubt that. The considerations are outlined in this okay uh, we have already uh, made a uh, four uh, points about this now likewise uh, now the ninth point is the economics of high speed rail signaling system now yes as i told you for two parts a huge investment is required one is at the time of uh, the uh, installation and a second one is uh, okay while maintaining but uh, in a long run okay uh, where uh, uh, the technology wise advanced and uh, play a critical role okay in a safety and uh, efficient of high speed rail operations where uh, these are the initial costs technology selection track side equipment signal control system and system integrities these are the core functions uh, today's presentation point of view i brought to you where uh, this initial investment of hsr signaling system is a substantial and careful evaluating technologies options and uh, considering their cost effectiveness in the long run track side equipment installation costs can be significant no doubt so optimizing equipment uh, placement is a crucial there for selection signaling control systems costs depends upon the factors like uh, network scale and uh, desired level of the automation uh, i told you here not the etcs level one this is a level two so per kilometer the cost also it, it will increase there and uh, integration of costs can vary depends upon the complexity of the existing system or uh, international standards to be met so this is a system integration and uh, of course these are the one more part of the life cycle cost there uh, there are three paramounts one is the maintenance cost then second one is the system upgrades upgrades where any software is to be upgraded so that's the one part and uh, third one is the energy consumption of course, uh, uh, having this much uh, investment uh, in a long run, as I told you, the increases uh, efficiency and improves the safety and operational costs uh, in a long run that will be uh, reduced. For example, reduce the delays. That's the one. And optimizing a train scheduling and uh, uh, optimally utilizing of the infrastructure. These are the three formulas thereby the value engineering is one and uh, standardization of the technologies is the second and life cost analysis is the third part so let me conclude uh, uh, okay here uh, the cost which required for the project where uh, by carefully considering the economic factors throughout the entire life cycle of the hsr signaling system we can definitely ensure it uh, delivers its okay promised safety and efficiency and uh, economical benefits so these three can be uh, possible uh, as a designer 
and uh, the future trends and uh, innovation high speed okay uh, rail signaling here now as i told you uh, one is the uh, cbtc is one and uh, second one is the etcs uh, system proven technology a standardized uh, signaling system for uh, interoperable hsr across the europe already being proved and gains uh, traction okay global due to its safety features proven safety features i can say and efficiency and interoperable benefits and the future advancements in etcs expected to be included uh, higher automation levels and cyber security enhancements these are the european countries about the 30 they are already being implemented so that technology is a uh, rightly okay it's suitable for the high speed and uh, as i've told you uh, as of now i am not okay uh, going to show you that but there is an artificial intelligence being already deployed uh, on the track uh, which continuously monitors the condition of the track and the rails and the equipment and everything so that is also it is integrated here so that okay uh, in right time it uh, senses the the failures before they happens the big way now once we use the uh, the data uh, moving from one point to other point uh, that's a threat for the encryption so threat for the data if somebody can interrupt there so the solution is for the encryption and uh, aware at various stages so it itself we call it a separate segment uh, is the cyber security for hsr So, in a conclusion, uh, the future of the HSR signaling is a bright and uh, driven by the innovation and the technology advancements, where uh, you can also have a, uh, okay the connectivity with the CBTC and ETCS, which if integrates with the artificial intelligence for uh, the design and for uh, the maintenance okay, of uh, AI, which integrates here and uh, a focus okay of a robust cyber security will shape a new era of a safe come efficient and reliable hsr operations so my presentation uh, uh, the idea is uh, the hsr is not uh, okay apart from the uae but this technology being now also there in now uh, we are using from gujarat to in india gujarat to delhi and gujarat to bombay so it's a HSR means uh, what uh, exactly I want to convey the message is uh, the existing conventional trains uh, uh, rightly they have been uh, okay uh, only using the speeds below 200. Once the uh, system gets upgraded to run from all respects, uh, track side as well as the onboard, okay, uh, uh, where uh, the speeds are between 200 to 400 is the HSR. So with this, uh, okay, uh, I am handing over, okay, back to our uh, Sumit sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. now it is back to you. Thank you. So uh, participants, if you have any particular questions, please, please uh, feel free to ask your questions in the chat box. We will take them up with, the, with Mr. Darshan. Any questions you'd like to ask? Okay. Yes, Gulam, please go ahead. Anybody, if you have any questions related to, does the existing connectivity in UAE or SHR? Yes, yes, Farhan, the existing connectivity in UAE or HSR. No, here, uh, what we, why we have chosen UAE? Uh, I think, uh, Sumit sir, are you going to answer this one? No, no, please go ahead, sir. Please take the question. Yeah. 
see uh, ua is one country uh, where uh, much happening and uh, where they do uh, very innovative and uh, the U the hsr being implemented in uh, the longest route by uae so there again uh, upcoming projects are there so we thought that it's not a uh, just a webinar but uh, use to be make it a useful webinar so we thought and we have uh, uh, expl explained everything in connection with the UAE. That's the one reason, please. Yes, uh, do, you see, the metro, oh, if anywhere in the world, if you see, the speed is, uh, uh, I can uh, define 60 to 90 average speed, not more than 100. That's purpose is different. Oh. The cost and the maintenance definitely it is there, but uh, the country wise they are ready to bear also. They have got a budget. Darshan, sir, I would request you. Uh... Yeah, I'm going through this uh, uh, sure. SMS. I mean, uh, they have type, uh, typed in the chat. Okay. Shafiq is asking, sir, what is the difference between normal metro rail signaling and high speed rail signaling? See, the high-speed rail signaling uh, is uh, basically a surface railways and the metro is not more than 100 kmph. And uh, it's only for the passenger. Whereas high-speed is for the both freight as well as the uh, the passengers. Both, both are there. Gulam Shagir is asking, sir, how many meters before the point machine? That uh, we are going to discuss in uh, detail uh, the course uh, because now I can't show here. Uh, it's uh, the three point machines are being put into the operation of the switch. That much I can tell you. Okay. Minimum, uh, uh, two or three. How can we relate basic signaling to HSR in Australia? What need to go through after the basic signaling? Get a job in Australia or overseas? Avinash, I think uh, this question may not be relevant for this session. Uh, we are specifically taking up questions related to UAE. Uh, okay, Biru Singh, is there any of our Indian origin company ge getting chances to work in UAE HSR projects? Now, in India itself, we go to international companies. Yeah, companies are there. Once they join, uh, we can discuss the companies. And uh, which are the areas, okay, they get a job also. Now itself, uh, I can discuss. Uh, and uh, here, uh, yes, uh, uh, where is the chat? Okay, sir, I'll take up on the next question. Which ATS yeah. system is currently being implemented in Dubai Metro? Darshan, sir, are you there? Yes, yes, I am there. Which ATS system is being currently implemented in Dubai Metro? Uh, that's again, it is specific to the OEM. Uh, right now, we can't disclose them. Because will, freight, will freight and passengers run on same track or parallel tracks? Uh, right now, that is only meant for the freight. Okay. Uh, now, who is this Abu Bas Baskar? Bakar. See, uh, what's the main difference between uh, CBTC and ATCS? The answer for that... Uh, the CBTC uh, is a OEM specific. ETCS is uh, uh, interoperable, can be across any OEM. And uh, number one, uh, that's a difference. And second difference is a CBTC is meant for only uh, the metros and the speed is limited, uh, not max more than 100 kmph. ETCS uh, can even, uh, the design wise, uh, it supports up to 500 kmph. So right now, okay, that much I can tell you, dear, there, Abu. Shafiq is asking, sir, is there any difference in te uh, technology-wise between metro rail signaling and high-speed rail signaling? 
high speed rail signaling also you are right uh, uh, shafiq uh, it's a oem specific uh, mostly but uh, the speed as i told you it's an option to you uh, if you choose a etcs then you got an option of interoperability otherwise again like a, uh, any japanese or other if you take then that becomes a one sided of a oem specific okay darshan sir i would request you if you could actually share the uh, uh, share a little bit detail on the sessions we aim to take uh, in our course program uh, yes yes so if you could you know ex briefly explain what all we'll be covering in the course modules uh, during the training program over to you sir yeah thank you uh, here in a high speed rail uh, uh, we are going to cover one is the that related technology definitions and their meanings and uh, the second one is the definitely we will connect with the evolution of signaling systems and uh, the evolution of signaling system which they are connected with the signaling technology for example the detection system okay so we started with a, a treadle system of mechanical to a dc track circuit to migrated to audio frequency track circuit to now we are using a technology we call it digital axle counters where even various type of principles of working uh, involved oem specific like uh, the modulation am uh, amplitude modulation phase modulation and the current dampening and other technologies and uh, the advanced signaling system also we are definitely going to di discuss uh, where including a uh, uh, the track engineering okay so very special point over the high speed rail is uh, it begins with everything okay of a very different from conventional where high speed uh, track uh, design itself it makes much difference away from the conventional so which uh, are also we are going to cover and uh, where uh, of course uh, you can choose uh, speed wise uh, this etcs and ertms also will support for the high speed high speed means 200 to 400 so where that technology also will discuss over there and uh, if participants are more we are also going to discuss uh, the north american positive trend control also sir what is it uh, what is the key takeaway so what will a participant be able to learn and uh, what would be the learning outcomes of this training program for the participants if they enroll into this training program what are the key learnings or uh, key takeaways they can expect from this training program what will be how this can help in them uh, the participants in building up a career in uae rail projects uh, number one uh, uh, investing on yourself uh, to upgrade uh, whatever uh, your position right now you will be add on with uh, the technologies which are in connected with the uh, high speed rail beginning from the uh, the basics to the other related technologies and uh, you have also been uh, okay supported by the one certification and uh, definitely based on this uh, there uh, okay this uh, one and a half hour plus we have discussed uh, for one country specific and uh, future all the conventional uh, railway systems being uh, uh, migrated to the high speed rail now you can take uh, any country including india now the conventional systems uh, now they are no more okay uh, the viable okay for a transportation of the same cost of the flight and this now upcoming technology in india itself you got a separate a dedicated freight corridor for already you have seen for the of freight corridor dedicated freight corridors uh, the eastern and western and uh, southern they are going to come like a uh, passengers also we have to have uh, like a uh, bullet trains and uh, these are there okay as a uh, every country now they are migrating from existing technologies to the next one and this uh, high speed rail uh, which we are of course uh, covering uh, with a cbtc and etcs artms and ptc i am promising you so these are the three add-ons for you make uh, uh, yourself upgrading to suits yourself for anywhere in the world uh, that includes the any metros that includes the surface railways and not only a country specific across the global you are now you can 
uh, migrate yourself. Okay, sir. Uh, there are a few questions. Uh, uh, Biru Singh is asking to implement HSR projects. Only signaling side work is required in UAE, or it's more. No, it's more. Uh, that's what I want to just discuss. Uh, here, yeah, yeah, very important point. Uh, very important point. One is, uh, you see, uh, number one is engineering position where uh, uh, designing, planning and uh, overseeing the construction and maintenance railway infrastructure as an engineering positions, okay? And number where uh, electrical, civil, as well as the mechanical and structural engineering or track engineering, these are the five areas. And apart from that, uh, those who are not, okay, those qualifications can also having opportunities like operational and maintenance, okay, which includes the real operation managers and maintenance supervisors and technical technicians where electrical, mechanical track and signal and telecommunication are unique. Uh, it's your interest, okay. So these professionals are ensuring uh, the operational maintenance. Apart from this, the third also lay there. Like uh, there are eight, uh, okay, the positions are there. And uh, one I saw, told you the engineering positions. Second one is the operational maintenance. And the third one is a project management. That's a bit higher one. The real engineer can also work as a project manager, overseeing a planning, execution, and completion of the railway projects. So this is the upcoming project. And the fourth one, if you are well with a higher qualifications like MTech and specialized, then you are fit for the design. So design roles such as a senior mechanical design engineer or the traction engineer or the rolling stock, okay? They are responsible for the design and development of new okay railway systems and technologies. And uh, that's a fifth one is a resident engineer, okay, track work. Okay, that's a one more. And uh, the sixth one is a software. These all are being okay, the embedded systems uh, required a software engineer also, where the IT background can now switch over into switch over into here, okay, software development, uh, creating and maintaining software for the supporting railway operations like i have shown you occ and uh, no you all are not from the engineering so seventh one for you it's a uh, finance and the administration so engineers uh, also can participate here no you are from uh, mba background so you can also have an opportunity of uh, the finance and the administration can work a role such as finance manager managers accounts, administrative assistants, and the procurement specialists. And lastly, if you are not fit one to uh, seven, like a one I told you the engineering position, second one is the operation and maintenance, third one is a project management, fourth one is a design, fifth one is a resident engineer, sixth one software development, seventh one finance and administration. If you don't want here, you become a HR, okay? Human resource, where the background, where your role is HR managers, uh, you can recruit the specialists, you can train them, you can develop the, okay, the office. So these are the eight areas. Uh, uh, it's not for this one, for everywhere. Once you go through this course, uh, you can choose your, okay, the new uh, uh, position, switching over to the job responsibility. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, uh, Darshan, sir, for your uh, uh, insights on high-speed rail signaling for UAE markets. I hope this session has added value to your knowledge and awareness. Uh, if you wish to, if you have uh, more queries, please feel free to write to us. It will be an honor for us to respond to your emails and help you in your rail career growth journey. Thank you so much for your time, everyone. Thank you, Darshan, sir, and wishing you a very uh, great evening ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you thank all you. Uh, for a patiently uh, you listened. And thank you, Sumit, sir. Thank you. Bye. Uh, Good night. The recording will be available on our YouTube channel tomorrow. And we will be sending an email to all of you so that uh, you could refer this again. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone.